Hey, Justin Skinner here, and today we're going to be talking about the motors from Pyroflip RC, the Hyperlite 2205s. We're going to talk about how they fly, their battery life, prop selection, and what your ideal target build weight should be with these motors. But before I get into that, I have to ask you a favor. My goal by the end of 2017 is to reach 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. And I'm nowhere near on pace to hit that right now. So I gotta ask for your help. My analytics tells me that three out of four of you, that 75% of my viewers are not subscribers. And it's probably just because you forgot. I know, it happens. Things get busy, you start watching the video, you click out it, you forget to subscribe. So before you do anything else, if you've been a regular watcher and you just haven't subbed, Take a second, click the button down the bottom left of your screen, right of your screen. If you're watching it, it'll be on the bottom right. Click that button, it won't even take you out of the video. Subscribe real quick. Help me reach my goal by the end of 2017 and I'll keep doing my best to bring you cool videos. All right, now let's get on to it. These particular Hyperlites are 2205, 25, 22 KV. When most people are running 2206, 2207, 2306 or bigger, why in the heck am I testing 2205 motors? Well, because I recently was flying the Hyperlite 2204 size motors on a 200 gram rig and I absolutely loved the efficiency I was getting with that setup. The thing I didn't love was the flight characteristics I got while flying in that weight range. So my goal with these motors is to find out if I can get within a comfortable flying weight range while retaining that same great efficiency I got on the 2204 size. After flying with them for a couple weeks, I now also think we may have made the jump from 2205 a little too soon, but I'll talk more about that later in the video. Hyperlites have always lived up to their name by being one of, if not the lightest motor in all of their categories, from their 20 gram 2204 to their 30 gram 2307 motors they just recently released. These motors are no different. Weighing in at just 24 grams, this makes it a great consideration for a lightweight 2205 size motor. These motors also come with extra long motor wires, so if you're running a 4-in-1 ESC or an all-in-one, you don't have to worry about extending the wire. As usual with the newer Hyperlite line, these two come in a naked butt, naked butt design, dropping the lower base protection in return for slight weight savings and additional strength to the motor base. I paired these motors with a Needle Frames Fastback, a 30A Cicada all-in-one from ReadyMade RC, a Unify Pro Race, XM Plus receiver, and Run Cam Mini for an all-up weight of 270 grams before props and batteries. This is about the lowest weight range that I can go and still enjoy the flying experience, but if you can keep your all-up weight with props to about 300 grams, I think you'll be able to still have a similar experience to mine. Any higher and you start losing out on that efficiency, and I can even prove that in a minute. Alright, the real question. So how did they fly? I've put about 50 packs through them so far, doing everything from my backyard technical tracks to wide open throttle tracks with and without a GoPro, and even a little freestyle when the tedium of race practice got to me. They excelled in my backyard tracks where top speed doesn't matter. The low end with the right prop was spot on what I needed to navigate the track and I never once felt out of control on the throttle or sloppy. They have very nice throttle response throughout the entire stick resolution, so I really enjoyed that. That feeling of being in control actually transferred over to every bit of flying I did with these motors. On the wide open tracks, they got up to speed quickly and carrying speed through turns was easier than on a larger motor like the T-Motor F40 Pros, which have been my main squeeze for months now. I think this is mainly due to them not being able to get up as quick as the F40s or reach the same top speeds, but I'm not so sure that's a bad thing. Throttle management on the more powerful motors is much more difficult than it is with the 2205s, and combining that with lower all-up weight on this build has allowed me to start taking corners tighter and more confident at speeds. Freestyle. I didn't do much except for a battery here and there to break up the monotony of practice, but the control was nice throughout all throttle ranges. I think this will be considered a race motor over freestyle because you won't get those crazy punch outs and hang time of the bigger motors, and the extra weight of a GoPro, if that's your thing, would make pulling out of a dive a little riskier. I did end up throwing a GoPro on for this review and it turns out it wasn't too shabby. The extra weight was definitely noticeable but manageable with clean fluid lines. I won't make it a regular thing though because the weight did drop flight time down to just barely two minutes and the goal of my build with these is longer flight times. Battery life. Back in the day when 2205 was a norm like a year, year and a half ago, I know that's ancient history in our hobby, I ran 1300 milliamp packs instead of the 1500 that most of us run today. So I had to grab some 1300 packs and since I got them I've been getting about two and a half to three minutes of flight time depending on the track. 
bringing the quad down at about 3.5 volts per cell. On the high speed track I've set up so far, 2.5 was easy. In my backyard, three minutes or more sometimes was possible. But here's the thing, I actually lost flight time jumping up to a 1500 milliamp pack, up to 40 seconds a couple times, which made it clear that you need to keep your build light to keep the efficiency up on these motors. My all up weight with a 1300 milliamp is 430 grams, while the 1500 milliamp battery brings it up to 480 grams. So there may be a little wiggle room, but if I were you, I'd shoot for an all-up weight of 450 grams or less. Prop selection. I only tried out two different props on this motor based on past experiences and what I know about prop and motor choices. The two props used so far have been the HQ5043 tries and the Dow Cyclone 5045s. Now the HQs felt good and gave about 10 to 20 seconds better flight times, but the Cyclones had better low end grunt and I felt all around more in control with them. I plan to test out some of the dual bladed options soon, but with regional finals coming up, I'm limiting my experimentation in order to get this rig locked in. Right now, the 5045 Cyclones are my favorite. I usually do end up liking something with more grip on the low end versus high end, but that's just my flying preference. All right, so to recap quickly, they have great control, excellent efficiency, and have allowed me to reach a new level of confidence while flying recently. And that brings me back to what I said earlier. I think we may have made the jump from 2205 to bigger motors too soon. I think there was a hype train. The hype was bigger and faster, but the tracks aren't bigger and faster. And so I'm beginning to wonder what's the point of faster motors if you can't reach their full potential in racing. I'm just speaking from personal experience here, but when I compare 2207 motors to these on the same track, I'm getting similar lap times. I think it comes down to a little theory I have about speed acclimation, where no matter what the equipment, we'll always go only as fast as we can process. In order to get faster, you have to acclimate your brain to those faster speeds before it can be achieved comfortably. I consider myself a pretty fast pilot, and I don't think I've reached the point of reliably processing speeds beyond what these 2205s can give me on the tracks we race today. And I believe many pilots would benefit stepping back into the past and trying out 2205s again. If you struggle with fluid lines, overshooting turns, overthrottling or throttle bumping where you pump the throttle up and down, give them a try. Look for a smoother flying experience and reach your potential on motors before jumping up and having to learn to control more power than you're comfortable with. Thanks for tuning in. Like, comment, and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subs by the end of the year by hitting that subscribe button. Thanks. Hi.